Shabbat Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to this video uploaded by the beloved brother Manatazak um, of the GMS Los Angeles camp. As you can see, his YouTube page, GMS, get this work, subscribe and be edified. The title of the video I'm responding to is Elder Judite Woman Knows Salvation is Nigh. All right. And as uh, we get into the video, it's, uh, you're going to see an uh, older Israelite woman pretty much uh, going into the fact that the chariots or what this world calls UFOs, <laughs> OK, um, which has been blasphemed by the powers that be. All right. With its pseudoscience and uh, blasphemy. All right. You know, when people think of, you know, uh, ships in the space, uh, which is something that's been known since the ancient times. When people think of that, you know, they think of big green eyed aliens. OK, with big ass hands, big feet eyes bigger than his damn face et you know riding a bike and all of that garbage all right but um as this sister is going to talk about in this lesson those are actually the angels of yahweh bashim yahweh shai and that's our defense and our help and big brother yahweh shai is coming on the fathership okay which is described in various scriptures now i'm going to play this video and then uh, ultimately, uh, there's particular points she's making that I want to expound on with the Holy Scriptures, because we know, according to the Holy Scriptures, all right, Revelation 1 and 7, behold, he cometh with clouds. OK, and what does that mean? He's coming with the chariots, which are likened unto clouds, and he's coming in the clouds. As a matter of fact, when you get Matthew 24 and 30. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. See? And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right, as we read here, all right, Revelation 1 and 7, behold, he cometh with clouds in every I shall see him, and they also which pierced him, all right, which is those Roman centurions, okay, which are most likely going to be a part of, <laughs> you know, the police force or Esau's military, and that's a point that I'm going to get into as well, because you have Israelites, all right, who are aligned and joined to Esau's military, and as we're going to show you, Pretty much, if you're a part of Esau's military, you're going to be used to fight against the second coming of Yahweh Shai in some shape, form, or fashion. And all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so Amon. All right. So without further ado, let's get into this video. And uh, we'll get some points based on what she says. I heard the so-called president, one president, say, if it be an alien invasion, would everybody put their differences aside and help fight the alien invasion? No. All right, and I believe she's speaking of uh, President Reagan. I believe it was Reagan who said if there is a uh, alien invasion, we would have to put our differences aside <clears throat> and fight. All right. And <laughs> when you get into second Ezra's the 13 chapter, as uh, we'll show you, that's actually what they're going to do. OK. But the thing is, you're going to have a lot of Israelites. All right. Who think that they're fighting some sort of good cause 
really, you're going to be fighting the second coming of Yahweh Shai. All right? Those of you who are part of Esau's military. Okay? And you're going to lose. But as she said, hell no. Okay? <laughs> we Israelites, those who are in our right minds, okay, know damn well, all right, what those chariots mean. Okay, because according to this devil, as you get a uh, revelation of 13 chapter, I always get this when I go into this topic. Okay, and this is the importance of knowing the truth. All right. The truth sets you free from all of the lies, the pseudoscience and the garbage that's taught in this world, according to the God of this world. That's why the scriptures say, if our gospel be hid. It is hid to them who are lost and whom the God of this world have blinded their eyes. The God of this world tells you that the the, the only flying objects can be done by man. The, the most high, through his only begotten son and the angel, they don't have any vehicles. Okay, that's too far out. Okay. This is Revelation 13 and 6, speaking of Esau, Edom's power structure. Okay, and it started with the Greeks, then the Romans, and so forth. So it says, and he opened his mouth. Who's the he? Esau, Edom, the beast. He opened his mouth and blasphemy against the Most High to blaspheme his name, which not only the exact name, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, but also the reputation of what the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is in this world. It's blasphemed, therefore, you see people walking around with no fear. And the thought, all right, of the so-called UFOs truly being angels coming to deliver the elect and, and you know, the, the second coming of Yahweh Shai, that, that's far from people's minds. Now, it's being talked about in the news, all right, as they're trying to control the narrative, but the average person you bring that up to, okay, they're going to tell you you're crazy, so they blasphemed his name, okay, and his tabernacle, which the tabernacle of God is with men, the Israelites, okay, and them that dwell in heaven. Who dwells in heaven? The angels, okay? All of these things have been blasphemed in this devil's society, okay? This man came to do the bidding of Satan. Now, going back to this video, Let's listen to her again. Talk about tonight. This evening is um, I heard so-called president, one president say, if it be an alien invasion, would everybody put their differences aside and help fight the alien invasion? No, because they them are our peoples up over your head. And like I said, it's been that now Israelite pull up a gun to shoot towards them. You heard that? Because those are our people up there. Showing you that the word of Yahweh Bashim Shai is spreading throughout the four corners of the earth. And our people are awakening. Uh, the dry bones are awakening. All right? Our people, okay, are on those ships. The angels. Okay? Now, real quick. Because you're going to have a lot of Israelites, a lot of our people and their, their ignorance. They're really going to try to fight against the second coming of Yahweh Shai, thinking, all right, that they're doing Esau a service. Okay? <laughs> this is the book of Isaiah, the 31st chapter in the third verse. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. And their horses, flesh, and not spirit. Their technology is just basically, it has a limit. It's all created, you know, by man, you know, using, you know, the, the blessing the Most High gave him. All right, these Edomites, these Moabites, all right, these particular, uh, you know, leaders of this world, they do have some very powerful technology. But at the end of the day, it's still, all right, nowhere near the level of the chariots, all right, and the right hand power. When Yahweh shall stretch out his hand, all right, which what is the hand of the Lord? Yahweh Shai, both he that help it shall fall. See that? And he that is helping 
shall fall down, and they shall fail together. Let's read this in the NLT. For these Egyptians, now who are the modern-day Egyptians? The Edomites. We're in a spiritual Egypt. Who's the modern-day Pharaoh? The Edomites. Okay? All right, we were brought into Egypt again with ships. Okay? Uh, you know, uh, spiritually Sodom in Egypt. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom a desolate wilderness. It's linked throughout the whole scriptures if you have ears to hear. For these Egyptians are mere humans. This is in the NLT. Not God. Their horses are puny flesh. See, the, 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 all of the bombs they have, all of the technology they have, it's puny in comparison to the, to the, to the real technology on the right-hand side. All right? Not mighty spirits. When the Lord raises up his fist against them, all right, which it's his right hand. That's how he's going to get the victory. Okay, when he raises up his fists against them, those who help will stumble. So those of our people who are a part of this military, all right, and this system who, you know, are refuse to separate, you're going to stumble and those being helped will fall. So you and them are going to fall. Though hand join in hand, the wicked will not go unpunished. They will all fall down and die together. And that's going to happen via what? The second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Because when you jump to verse 5, it says, As birds flying, so will Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, defend Jerusalem. All right? Wherever the elect are. That's, this is our defense. All right? Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. And this word passing over in the Hebrew is Pesach, because this is going to be the second Passover. Okay? Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. All right? For in that day, every man shall cast away his idols of silver and gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. So it's time for our people to repent. And as you can see, our people are waking up. All right. But you who are going to help this Edomite via his, you know, uh, his space force or his military period. OK, because when you, you go into the news, you, you constantly hear about all right, this this extension of the military branch, a new branch of military called the space force. And when you go into the uh, when you look it up on the Internet, there's going to be immediately articles all right, a fact check telling you, no, the Space Force isn't going to try to fight against aliens. You know this, know that, although we know that they're ultimately preparing to fight the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Because they know there's a target on their back. They know they're going to have to be paid back for the evil and wickedness they did. Okay? And the Lord is gathering the militaries over in the Middle East and gathering them, getting all of this weaponry just so... They can destroy each other and be destroyed by Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay? <laughs> this is uh, Isaiah 34 and 1. Come near ye nations and hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that are come forth of it. For the, fear, for, the, for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. All right. He have delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and their host shall fall down as a leaf falleth off the vine and as the falling from a fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, upon the people of my curse to judgment, which these are the modern day Pharaoh, the modern day Egyptians. See? So that sword, which is ultimately Yahweh Shai and the angels, and also the missiles that are going to be used by these different nations to destroy Babylon, to destroy uh, uh, each other. Okay? Because there's going to be all out war on the planet Earth. Okay? And the right hand. Let's get Psalms 98. 
is how the Heavenly Father is going to get the victory, just as he got the victory all right, over the uh, uh, Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Those mighty acts were happening because there was an angel, all right, the right hand of the Most High, all right, at that time doing mighty things. This is how the Israelites were able to perform those mighty works. And that angel is still there. He's on the right-hand side right now. Nine, Psalms 98 and 1, O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he have done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. See that? That's Shahawashai. Shai. The Lord have made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. And we just read all the kindreds of the earth show well because of what they see in the skies and the heavens. Okay. Let's go back to the sister. Hell no. We, we, we Israelites, we ain't fighting. We ain't going to put up no gun. We, 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 we are ultimately going to be calling on a name. As the scriptures say, the remnant are going to be affrighted. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's, let's get that. <laughs> In the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter, as we get beamed up. All right. As we see the destruction happening in the earth, we're going to be like, oh, we're going to be crying to the Lord. And he's going to deliver us. All right. <laughs> You're going to have to have some hardcore faith to get through this. But this is uh, Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. This is the Israelites awakening after being in a dead state starting in around the 60s till now. Look, all right, uh, how the understanding of who the Israelites are, what the chariots are. The name of the Lord, his son. All of these things are the spirit of life from the most high through Yahweh Shai entering into us. We're fulfilling this very prophecy. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. See that? And their enemies beheld them. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell, Babylon the Great, zero to nine zip code. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000 because there's a complete number of men who have to be destroyed here in Babylon the Great. All right, the two thirds are a part of that. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. So as we see this destruction happening, we're going to be affrighted. Let's look up that word. We're going to be, you know, just imagine that. Of course, you're going to be like, oh, shh, you know. We're going to be screaming the name of the Lord, though. Okay, we're going to be affrighted. Emphobos, thrown into fear, terrified, affrighted. So, yeah, we're going to be scared. We're going to be like, oh, damn. All right, but there's a great deliverance coming to the remnant, and that's written. All right? So, Let's keep going in this video. Rewind it just a little bit. And like I said, big man now, it's you like pull up a gun to shoot towards me. Nope. Them is not aliens. Them are your, are your ancestors. And our kin peoples up over their head. It's not an alien invasion. They want you to think it's an alien invader so everybody can go to try to shoot at Melanated people did not shoot that day. I'm sorry. To All right. And it's Israelites. But you're going to have our people in the military thinking they're doing a good service and they're going to be destroyed. All right. As uh, what does the scripture say, man? It's more of us. Damn, I can't. I want to know what that scripture is. Um. Uh, let me see where that's at. I know it's in the book of Kings, I believe. Let's see here. Here we go. This is a beautiful story as well. Showing you the Lord is always with us. Provision is already made for the elect. 
This is 2 Kings 6 and 16. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. All right? This is why you, as 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 the sister said, right? <laughs> what did she say? All right? Don't, uh, uh, they want you to think it's an alien invasion, but really, for us Israelites, that is our salvation, the, the remnant elect. That's why in the scriptures, okay, as Habakkuk is seeing a vision of God's deliverance of his people, okay, Habakkuk 3, all right, and 3, it says, God came from Teman and the Holy One from the Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. All right. Now, just as, you know, the uh, chariot came, you know, for us to receive the law. At the time, you know, of Moses, well, the, the, the chariots are going to come from the east. All right. For the deliverance, it says. His brightness was as the light and he had horns coming out of his hand. And there was the hiding of his power. And those horns represents the fire that's going to be coming out of those chariots. All right. And synonymously, we are going to be delivered. But it says there was the hiding of his power. That's those chariots. OK, because Esau has airplanes, helicopters and all kinds of technology. But for the most high and his son and the angels to have vehicles uh, 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 is the most craziest thought ever. That's because the God of this world have blinded your minds. This is the importance of the truth. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals forth at his feet. All right, because it's going to be a lot of destruction. <laughs> he stood and measured the earth and beheld and drove asunder the nations and the everlasting mountains were scattered and perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. So he's seeing all of this destruction going on in the earth. And I'm going to just jump to the point. Verse 8, was Yahweh displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thine wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? Thy chariots of salvation. So salvation is coming from the sky for the Israelites. And for years they've tried to manipulate your minds into thinking anything in the sky has to be some sort of weird alien. Now, of course, they do have their uh, left-handed, you know, miracles, and they do have stuff, all right, uh, uh, that, you know, they got have in the skies as well, but we know the chariots are there. Our faith isn't shaken because we, we know the devil has his, his wickedness going on. Okay? So the chariots are likened to what? The chariots of salvation. Let's look up this word chariot. Marakaba. All right, a chariot. You go to the root word, Marakab, chariot, place of riding, chariot, seat. Now, who sits at the seat? Okay. <laughs> okay, Rakab, to mount and ride. Got a brother named Rakab. Okay, to mount and ride. So, who's riding those, those vehicles? The angels. Okay. Second Kings 6 and 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes of the, the eyes of the young men. And he saw and behold, the, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about. Okay. He, he, he opened his eyes so that he can see because horses are symbolic of power in the chariots, which are the chariots. of he, he, he saw them. And what did he say? All right. In verse 16, fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with him. That's why it says the, 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 the son of man is going to come with healing in his wings. All right. That's what we're trying to get. OK, so when the when these things happen. All right. Esau is going to blame what an alien invasion. All right. And the American people are going to do anything in their power. They're going to be throwing eggs, rocks, 
I ain't going to be throwing no eggs because there'll be a, <laughs> food shortages in that time. But, they, they you know, the, the Eve, you know, throwing cans, they're, they're doing it. You know, the people are really going to try to fight against the second coming of Yahweh Shai, in particular, those of you who are in the military. Those of you who are in Esau's military, you are going to be used to fight against the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, man. And we'll get that scripture directly, but let's listen to some more. Bust your bubble. If anybody be shooting that dead, it's going to be y'all. Okay? So when they get on that TV talking about it's an alien invasion, no. Them are our peoples up over their head. Them are the peoples of the Most High God, the Creator. Is coming to put this earth back in its rightful place. <laughs> so no, anybody can help them fight. No, Joe sure ain't. I hate to be the one bush your bubble, but it's not gonna work. No, because I know y'all got fire, but I think they got some too. So no. Mm mm. The melanated people that's going to help the melanated people. Thank you, Lord. And it's beyond the melanated people. It's the Israelites. Because right? there's a melanated heathen. See, but they're, they're coming ultimately to, to, to deliver the Israelites. Okay, which are going to come in all shades, shapes, sizes. It's all about the inward, the spirit. All right? Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's finna help the melt. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. They finna help their own. It's time. That's right. Tired of all these cool, all this crooked stuff in this earth. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, and we're we're tired of coons because because ain't nothing worse than a, a coon. After all Esau has done, you still have our people. Ready to go to bat and, f and listening to everything this devil tells him, man, with no hesitation. Now, when you get that in the scriptures, 2nd Edges 13, all right, and 3, all right, this is a vision. And I beheld, and lo, a man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, all right, and that man, is, as we read, is going to be the son of the Most High. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. Now, we just read in Habakkuk a similar vision. It's the same. They're seeing the same thing, but, all right, they're, they're giving their account of the visions they saw. And whensoever, whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth fell it when it filled it the fire. Because, that, you know, that's the, all right, the, the hiding of his power. Fire is going to come. Okay. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a great multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. All right? And the, 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 the heavens, Shemayim, are likened unto waters as well. I remember you had a group saying that the chariots are going to come out of the ocean. No, the, the, clearly we read they're going to come out of the heavens. The people are going to be looking up. Okay? But I beheld... And lo, he graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. That's the chariot. Okay? And w w verse 8, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet durst fight. See? They're going to fight against the second coming of Yahweh Shai. All right? And as you read, they're going to get burned and destroyed. Okay? And it, it expounds on the vision. We'll just go down to the point. Okay. Man, this is a beautiful vision. Let me just start at a good point. Verse 29. This is the interpretation. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. All right, the remnant. And shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. People are going to be like, whoa. Whoa. The strangeness of our, of our salvation so far beyond what anyone thought. And one shall undertake to fight against another and one city against another and one people against another and one 
uh, place against another and one realm against another. It's going to be all out division and war on the earth. See? One realm against another. And at the time shall be when all these things shall come to pass and the signs which shall happen, which I showed thee before. And then my son shall be declared whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And when all his son, and when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have against one another. Okay. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting, but it ain't going to work. And the elect is going to be delivered. So, yeah, they're going to fight the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Which is why you keep hearing about this space force. Okay, and I just was reading an article where they, they want to expand. Okay. They want to expand the, the, the space force. But then there's always a fact check telling you, now nah, the space force ain't trying to fight aliens, yada, yada, yada. Okay, now the Space Force is going to be used to zap down people on Earth as well. All right, but we know the purpose is that they know their ass is grass. And it's going to be a first round KO. It's not even going to be a fight. Okay, it ain't like the, 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 the son of the Lord with the power he has is going to be, you know, in a, in a good fight. No, you're going to lose first round knockout, right hand, get the victory. Okay. So, <laughs> y'all are going to lose, man. Okay? And you're going to have our people in the middle. They're going to die. They're going to, you know, be trying to fight against Yahawashai. And what's going to happen? They're going to die. This is Second Edras 16 and 33. The virgins shall more ha mourn having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn having no helpers. <laughs> and that independent, you know, woman thing, ain't, that's going to be out of the door in these days. Okay, hell, we as the woman of the Lord, starting with the men, need help. Okay, nobody, and, and nobody's on the earth is independent. We all depend on someone or something. What are you talking about? Okay, we all need, we all uh, need in the war shall their bridegrooms be destroyed and their husbands shall perish of famine. So in wars, a lot of our people, a lot, they're going to be destroyed. They're going to go over to the thinking they're fighting, the, the, doing the bidding of God, fighting in their, for their satanic country and lose. Melted, burnt to a crisp. Me one second here. So no, ain't nobody finna help y'all fight nothing, no alien invasion. Because your own government's supposed to be trying to pull off a fake alien invasion. But no. Look how that light up. See how that light up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Hate to be the one bush above. So that's all I got for today. Sorry. Mm -mm. Nope. Not this time around. They ain't even have to fight in no wars either. Hit the bushy bubble on that tip. She reminds me of my uh my dad's mother, my grandmother. Anyway, um, yeah, and let's check this out off of Jason A's channel, Signs in the Heaven, all right, because the chariots have been popping up. All right, well, tonight the mystery remains unsolved. What exactly were those strange lights seen off the coast? Eyewitness photos capture the then mysterious phenomena over the ocean, and videos of the lights were all over social media. Mystery lights in the sky Monday night seen across San Diego. They're just, they're just a Tijuana that left everyone with the same question. What is that? 
this was something different. It just was, and it felt something different, too. Natasha Reichert and her mother, Donna, were taking a late-night stroll when they saw two pulsating lights in the sky. Uh, yeah, it's quite, they're creating quite a buzz. These mysterious lights, they appear right off of our coast here in San Diego. Yeah, they're moving a little bit. You see five of them, sometimes you see four. Dan Hare from Encinitas says he never saw any kind of aircraft. He says there were initially two dots. Then up to six, they would blink on and off, and it lasted about an hour. But I've never seen anything in my life that lasted that long. You see these little, maybe, uh, flashes of lights through the sky, and you think that you saw one, but to me, it felt very real. In fact, you could see them in Bayho, thanks to video from Alan Olson, but we also saw them in Encinitas, Chula Vista, Mission Beach, and of course, in a number of other locations, we know where they were they were spotted across the border as well. And these were coming back and going, moving different directions, and and then all of a sudden getting you know clustered together. And um, yeah, it was just not. It was definitely not of this world. <laughs> the lights could be seen all across San Diego, even from Federico Barin's home in Rosarito, Mexico. It caught my attention, and I started, you know, I decided to start recording this to analyze it later. Federico says he thought it had to do with the military. I'm very realistic. I, I, I don't believe in those uh, conspiratory theories or anything like that. You know, I just, I, I just want an explanation you know, to find out what's going on. The San Diego Fire Department told ABC 10 News that the flare could be seen five miles offshore. They believe the orange glow was... Look at that. Are they moving? Oh, wow. Too cool. The best answer yet is that it was some kind of military exercise. That's what lifeguards told San Diego police. But I called Camp Pendleton and Naval Air Station North Island both said they had no idea. I also made a call to MCAS Miramar and the Coast Guard. Look, under the night! It's been solved. The U.S. Coast Guard says lights spotted over the Pacific were flares fired from a ship off the coast of San Diego. The lights were spotted from multiple neighborhoods around 9 o'clock last night. That they are unaware of what these things could be. There were also rumors it could be the Imperial Beach 4th of July drone show. However, IBPD said they haven't heard a thing. The truth is out there somewhere. Again, the lights are just sitting there. Yeah. Uh, so hovering. Moving pretty slow, hovering. So, but yeah. uh, this one, mm, it's bizarre. It's a there is a double mystery on the moon involving a rocket that crashed into the orbiting rock. First, there's no idea who launched the rocket, but the bigger mystery is why did it leave two craters? NASA says astronomers noticed the rocket on a collision course last year. It crashed on March 4th. It left, I don't know if you can see this, a double crater. Now, at least 47 NASA rocket bodies have created spacecraft impacts on the moon, according to data from Arizona State University. But this is the first time, apparently, a rocket has caused two craters. NASA says two large masses on each end of the rocket may have caused it. So far, no nation has taken responsibility. Mm -hmm. Wow. Big news in the world of astronomy. A Wednesday NASA media teleconference revealed a sneak peek into the first images the James Webb Space Telescope team will release to the public on July 12th. In less than two weeks, we'll get to see the first scientific data and full-color images from the James Webb Space Telescope. Among the first photos, we'll show the deepest of our universe that has ever been captured. And still, it's mind-blowingly beautiful, the sensitivity of these, of these instruments and the science. It sees infrared light our eyes can't. And it sees light so far away, it's billions of years old. Watching how that light evolves will give scientists clues as to how our universe formed after the Big Bang. We're gonna... Whatever. You devils are going to lose. All right? You're lying. You're hurt. Okay? Ain't no billions of years. All right? And as Yahawashai said, you're going to fall as lightning. You're going to fall. You're not going to win. The technology we ha you have, CERN, all of these put together, all right, uh, can't, it's, it's not even going to come close, okay, to uh, the uh, chariots, okay, and the technology we have in the form of the uh, chariots, which are on our side, Lord willing, we're of that number. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm tired of hearing this devil talk. Shalom.